Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard, and if you'll remember a while back, I did a review on this. This is the North American Arms 22 Magnum, little uh, five shot, tiny revolver, but there are tinier ones. And inside this box right here, I've got the tiniest one they make. Let's open it up. Okay, North American Arms inside this cardboard box is a metal box, and we'll get this thing out of here. and then open up the metal box, and there it is. This is the North American Arms 22S. This is 22 short only, not 22 shorts and long rifles, but 22 short only. Now inside your box underneath here, you're gonna have the keys to the box. You're gonna have the paperwork that comes with it, and it's gonna be your owner's instruction manual, and it's gonna be all kind of goodies in here, stuff for, uh, North American Arms, register for your warranty. A uh, little bit of instructions in here on how to load it, how to put it on the safety notch and everything. Uh, you're gonna have a little catalog here. 22 mini revolver accessories are gonna be in there. And there's a whole slew of stuff in there. And yes, there are bigger grips that you can get for these things that make it a lot easier to hold on to. But I just wanted to keep the novelty of being such a small firearm, a small firearm. Uh, there's going to be a price list in here for different parts and pieces and accessories that you want. And then an offer to join the NRA is also going to be in there. So we'll get the paperwork put back in there. And for right now, we're just going to throw the keys right here on top, get the boxes out of the way, and take a look at the revolver. All right, now when I say this thing is tiny, there's the 22 Magnum version of it. And then there's the 22 short. There is one that goes right in between there, and that'll be the 22 long rifle which will also shoot shorts. But this is the one I really wanted. That thing is extremely tiny. And it works just the same way as the 22 Magnum. It's a single action. So you pull the hammer back and then you pull the trigger and that releases the hammer. Uh, same thing with your center pin or your base pin there. You've got that little pin you push in on there and then you pull your center pin out or your base pin and you can pull that hammer back a little bit and get that little tiny cylinder right on out of there. It is 22 short only. I do have some 22 shorts here and 22 shorts are, 22s are a lot of fun. 22 shorts are even more fun. And let's compare it to a 22 long rifle. There's your two rounds there. There's a 22 long rifle, there's the 22 short. And then we can look at the 22 Magnum also which is gonna be the other revolver there. There's quite a bit of difference in that short and that Magnum. And there's quite a bit of difference in these two firearms themselves. Now these are actual firearms, they are not toys. They are the real deal. Uh, clean up on this thing is gonna be really easy. The barrel is quite a bit shorter than the 22 Magnum one, which leads me to believe there's probably gonna be some bullet tumbling with this thing too being that it's such a short barrel, but we'll get this thing out on the range and give it a few shots and see how it does. Really cool rosewood grips on it. Really nice finish on this gun. You got the bead blast area there and then you got the brushed uh, stainless finish on the sides there and everything. Just really cool looking guns. Same thing with the cylinder. They're done the same way. Bead blasted the whole thing and then machine the outside of it. Get that nice polished finish on it. Little five shot revolver. They're pretty cool little guns, I think. They are difficult to hold on to when you're firing them, but they're just they're just cool. Same thing when you go to put your base pin back in, there's that little detent ball right there, and that detent ball is gonna have to go in that little divot underneath the barrel there, so you gotta put that so it's up, push your um, spring-loaded pin part in there. You gotta make sure you got everything lined up just right, and it'll pop right back in there, and then go ahead and function check it, pull your hammer back, make sure it rotates the cylinder. Don't dry fire these things. It's not real good on them. There is also a notch between each cylinder. Pull it back to the half cock position and you can see this is unloaded, but you can see right here, you'll see the cylinders, uh, the chambers in the cylinder. There's one at the bottom, so those five shots, so it's a pentagon shape there. In the top there is that little notch right there that's gonna be on the top, so there is no alignment with the, uh, the rounds in there. No way that the hammer can accidentally be hit and set a round off, and that's a perfectly safe way to uh, carry it. Just slip it right in your pocket. They do make little holsters for these things too. Belt buckles, that'll hold these in there. They're just a really cool 
uh, little firearm. We'll get this thing out on the range, get it loaded up with five rounds of 22 short. I've got some Remington Golden Bullets, and I've got some Aguila Super Extra Shorts. I think, I haven't seen any in a long time, but I think they still make the CB caps in 22 short, and those would be a lot of fun in this little revolver. All right, everybody, we're out here on the range in the saloon with the uh, little North American Arms revolver. And the nice thing about this is when you get one of these, you're going to get this case. It's a metal box. It does have holes in the back of it so you can mount it somewhere if you want so nobody can pick it up. Um, but another cool thing about it is if you've got a couple of these revolvers, you're going to get one of these cases with every one of them. But you really don't need a whole lot of these cases because these little revolvers, you can fit at least three of them in there, maybe four, depending on which ones you've got, easily in the one case. And if you want to stash them in different places around your house, you can do that too. But I said that I was going to have the Aguila 22 shorts, the Remington Golden Bullet 22 shorts, and I got to thinking after I did the first part of it that I had some of these, and these are the CCI CB 22 shorts. These are a 29 grain lead round nose clocking in at 710 feet per second. The only thing smaller than these would be the 22 BB caps and they are tiny, tiny things. And a lot of places I looked at said those are discontinued, but I'm gonna keep searching because I'd like to find some of those. They are extremely slow, like 400 feet per second or something like that. And it's a tiny, tiny bullet. But anyways, we're gonna get this thing opened up and we're gonna get the cylinder taken out. We're gonna load it because that's what you gotta to do to load this thing. And I showed you earlier about setting the safety notch. What you gotta do is pull it back to the half cock position. Well, that's full cock there. Pull it back to the half cock, the first click. Then you gotta pull it back a little bit farther and then you can get that safety notch lined up and let the trigger down between the cylinders. If it's, it's a little tricky. If you pull it just back to the half cock, you can't do it. You gotta pull it back just a little bit more. But anyways, we're gonna get this thing opened up and get it loaded up and then I've got I've got three of these targets set up up there at the seven yard line because really the accuracy on this thing it's a little tough to shoot but it's an up close and personal gun it's a belly gun and we're going to try to keep it in those kind of distances and give it a few shots and I put three targets up because we're going to try we'll try the Remington Golden Bullets first we'll go to the upper right hand target take five shots with it and then we'll try the Aguilas and go to the upper left hand target and then we'll try the little CB shorts uh, on the center lower target to load it up just pull your cylinder out take your ammo Remington Golden Bullets in this case and drop five rounds right down in there and once you got all five in the cylinder there, just take and put your cylinder right back in it. Make sure everything's lined up. Put your base pin back in, push your detent in there. Once you get everything lined up, it is a little tricky to line everything up too. Sometimes anyways. I got another issue here. My detent ball has come out. And that's not a good thing. I did not lose it. That is a good thing. Let's put that back in there. Pop it back down inside. And let's get this thing put back in, hopefully, without dropping anything. And there we go. That is not a good thing when that detent ball does that because it'll fall out. It's tiny, and if you lose it, you're pretty much dead in the water with this thing. All right, we got it locked in there. Now it's not gonna come out when it's installed there, that's for sure. Now, if you're gonna load this thing and carry it, you need to practice with it unloaded uh, to put it in that safety notch because it's kind of a difficult gun to hold on to, and being so small, you definitely do not want to put your hand in front when you're trying to set that hammer in that safety notch. You definitely want to keep it over to the side because if that thing slips, it's, you're not gonna have a good time, that's for sure. And it is in the safety notch right now. I can look on the back of it without having to stare down the barrel there and see that my hammer is between the upper two cylinders there. So it is in the safety notch. I don't have to worry about hitting the hammer and setting it off. You can't pull the trigger and set it off because you have to cock it first being a single action. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and do the upper right hand target with the uh, Remington Golden Bullets and see how it does. All right, now, just like with the 22 Magnum, this thing is a little tricky to aim to get a good sight picture on it. You actually have to look down the top of this thing to get it flat 
and your, your front sight on there is just going to be a way to center it up uh, for your windage. Your elevation, you need to look flat down the top of this thing. So it's tiny, it's going to be hard to hold on to, even harder than the 22 Magnum, but it should be a little less power, so it shouldn't hopefully flip up in the hands very much. And uh, we'll give it a try and see how it does. Let's try this again. It did not hit the, uh, it's a very light primer strike on there, I can tell you that. We'll try it again. And there's another one. That's not good. I am zero and three, let's try this again. There, finally got one to go off. Not sure where that hit, but uh, let's try another one. There's two. Maybe the second time on these other three will do it. Now I've got one more in there that's uh, not fired yet, so. And I think it's this one right here. There it was, all right, there's five shots. I don't see a single hole on the target there. So I'll have to get up there and look at it and see uh, where they hit or if they even hit it. All right, I didn't see a single hit on that target up there. Uh, I'm not sure where they're going, whether they're going high or low. I probably should change out my target boards with so many holes in the back there. But let's go ahead and get it unloaded. We'll get the base pin back out of it. I have to keep an eye on that. Uh, I think this one's probably going to be going back because that detent ball just will not stay in there. We'll open that up. They are very light primer strikes on there. It could be the actual case of the ammo. I'm not sure, but um, I'll have to definitely keep an eye on it. And the shells come out pretty easy. I did have to give them just a little tap. They're a little sticky in there, but um, still they're pretty easy to keep track of anyways. So let's Let's do five more of these of the Remington Golden Bullets and then we'll stand a little bit closer to the target there, maybe three yards away and see if that does any better there. That way I can get an idea of where it's hitting at. Same thing when you load it up, just drop them in and go. All right, now I'm only about three yards away, about nine feet. So if I can't hit it here, I've got problems. All right, we'll try it again. And should be one more in here. Okay, that was all five of them and I actually hit it. It shoot high, I can see that because I had to aim a little bit low, kind of tip the gun down a little bit, but uh, that did a whole lot better. All right, there's my five shots. That was my first one. That's when I discovered it was really shooting high. So I pointed it down a little bit. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, the windage, I'm pulling a little bit to the right and it could be because of this little spur trigger trying to get the tip of my finger on it. I may be doing that, uh, but I figured out where it's hitting at for elevation. We'll go ahead and load up five of the Aguilas and try this other target.
All right, that one round just did not want to go off, but one, two, three, four, five. I mean, I could pretty much cover it up with my thumb. Still high and to the right a little bit. Now we're gonna put some of the little CB shorts in there and try the center target. All right, the five rounds of CB shorts, one, two, three, four, five. I'm still trying to figure out that elevation thing a little bit, but I've got the windage a little better anyways, closer to the center. Still got one over there to the right. All five of these went off on the first try too. So I, I don't know so much that it's the, uh, the gun itself or it's the actual primers in there. Some of those Remington Golden Bullets I've had for many, many years and um, the Aguilas did a little bit better. These pretty much worked flawlessly. Okay, the CB shorts were actually pretty fun, so I'm gonna load up five more of those and try them from the, uh, yeah, I'm gonna try them from the full seven yards there and see how they do. Gotta watch that detent ball on there though. This, this will definitely have to go back. Uh, it's a brand new gun and there shouldn't be any issues with that. And almost no case swell on those little CB shorts either, so uh, they just fell right out. They look pretty much the same. I mean, they're the same size and everything. A little bit different bullet configuration on there, but um, they work great. All right, I'm not gonna put a new target up there, but I'm gonna go for that uh, same lower center one there. Hopefully I'll have five more holes in it. These again are the uh, CCI uh, CB shorts. And I'm gonna get a little close up on here. I mean, you can see there is not much to grip onto there, so it's a tough one to hold on to. All five of those fired just fine too. So um, I don't think it's the gun. I think it was the ammo. I may throw five more of those uh, Remingtons in there just to see how they do, and you can see the reaction of it in the hand. Not quite as bad as the, um, the Magnum was, though. And believe it or not, I did get all five of those in that target, too. So this is going to be five more of the Remingtons. We'll see how they do in the upper right hand. Same target I fired them in before, but let's see how these, uh, if they go off all the time. All five of them went off that time. Maybe it just needs a little breaking in period or something, but uh, they didn't do too bad. Not quite as much flip on this thing as you do with the uh, 22 Magnum. It's a lot more powerful round and just a tiny bit bigger gun. Uh, looks to me like I got all five of those in there too, so I've kind of figured out where it's shooting. I'm gonna do five more of the Aguilas real quick. All right, five more Aguilas, upper left-hand target. See how they do. All five of those fired too. Maybe, like I said, maybe just need a little breaking in there. Uh, so all five of the Remingtons fired, all five of the Aguilas fired, and all 10 of the uh, CCI CB shorts fired just fine. And I think I figured the sight picture out because that looks like there's 10 holes in those too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops, I think I missed one with the Remingtons. But these are all Remingtons, these are all Aguilas, and these are all the CCI CB caps, which I think are the most fun. All right, you can, I don't know if you can see my hand there is pretty well smoked up, pretty good anyways. And most of that is powder coming out of the rear because of where it's at there. I'm not catching it from the cylinder gap there. Um, yeah, that's most of that is just kind of blow back out of the rear there. It's not enough to, well, rupture a case anyways, but um, they do swell up just a tiny bit. And that's pretty evident when you go to take them out. Pull it back to that first little click there, get that pin out. 
Again, being careful not to lose that detent ball. So when I take the, um, the CB22 shorts, they pretty much fall out. I can shake a little bit. This one here, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort, but they are a little higher velocity anyways. I can't remember. I think they're 1,095 on the Aguilas, and they are somewhere around, let's see, on the 22 and the Remingtons. They are um, 1,095 also. But like I said, these are the most fun, the little CB shorts. And we'll go ahead and drop five more rounds in there. And I may try to take some shots at the steel target up there. Now the steel target is right there and it's 15 yards away and I got the 22 CB shorts in there. So we'll see what I can do with it. out of five at 15 yards at least that's what it sounded like they're not hitting very hard that's for sure all right there it is guys that is the north american arms 22s i fired three different kinds of ammo in it remington aguila and ccis the cci the the cb 22 shorts are truly the most fun i think in any gun but you don't want to fire them out of anything longer than a 24 inch barrel and you want to make sure that round comes out of there because some of them are so low powered that it will not make it to the end of the barrel and you don't want to fire one behind that anyways. Uh, this one has the only issue I found with it is that detent ball and I'm not real happy about that. Like I said, I will probably be sending this one back to them or let them know that the, uh, the detent ball comes out of there, which is not good. And... Um, see what they say what they do uh, they should I mean they've got a pretty good warranty on them it's I believe it's lifetime warranty on them anyways um, and they really are a well-made gun I just not sure what happened with that one and see there's the CBI's two of them didn't fall out the uh, the CB shorts but uh, I mean just tapped them with my thumbnail and they come out just fine they don't get quite as much case swell on them anyways but it's a pretty cool little gun and like I said this is gonna be the tiniest production revolver there is um, I mean there were some really small much older ones but um, this is a modern production you know good stainless steel nice rosewood grips on it, it just just a really good looking gun and being stainless it's pretty easy to clean up especially using modern ammo you don't have to worry about the corrosiveness of it um, they're just pretty cool so it, I mean there's gonna be a whole set eventually I will get the uh, the one that goes in between there the 22 long rifle Hopefully I won't have any issues with it either, but um, they're pretty neat. It slip right down in your pocket. You know, if you you want to conceal carry, if you're allowed to do that wherever you live, check your local laws and everything, and check the businesses that you work at and stuff too. Some places will not allow you to conceal carry inside their building. But this is definitely a good choice for a backup, I would say. I don't know that I would carry this as my primary, but anything is better than a pointy stick or a rock, you know. So check it out if you want to, North American Arms 22 Short. If you could hit this button up here to check out some of my other videos, hit this button right here to subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review.